Hey, what's going on everybody? Joe Menza here. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. In this painting, I thought I would do something very, very different. I had an old painting. I wasn't really feeling it. I threw it in the bin. I didn't like the way the water was running down. I just didn't really like anything about it. And I threw it under my desk actually. And I thought for this, I would take this, save this piece of paper and kind of use this as an underpainting and paint something over the top of it just to show how flexible you can be if you make a bad painting. We'll make this into a winter scene and we'll use some white. Um, but basically what I'm doing now is I'm just wetting the whole thing down, which is actually still activating the paint underneath. So we're going to cause the paint to fade. We can go and we can correct areas. Um, but using the white will make you know it more opaque. So there's a lot of that you're not going to see, but there's some neat effects that will come through. And you can actually salvage a piece of paper by doing that. As long as what you're going to paint is sort of similar to what's there, that makes it easier. So in this case, we'll do another, like, mountain scene. And we'll just change it around and just go with the flow. So again, I'm just wetting this down, kind of clearing away. There was little spatters. I had it sitting under my desk and paint was spattering on it. So I'm just going to kind of start recovering some things, maybe trying some different things here as we go along. Um, not really one you want to follow along too much with, but maybe you want to watch it with the idea of how can I use this in certain situations in my paintings. So you can see now a lot of the original lower part of the painting has kind of washed off. But because the paint itself is staining, we still have some colors there. Uh, so you're not going to be able to get a clean sheet of paper. Now you could use the back, of course, um, but we're going to sort of use the underpainting to show through as sort of a guide. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of playing. I'm just bringing in some ultramarine with some Payne's Gray and just sort of sculpting out this sky and seeing what I like and taking some things away. I'm taking away a little paint in there um, just really to show you what you can do. You can leave this right now. You can start making some clouds with a clean hack brush. Um, and, and really, you can kind of just see where it goes and say, I like this, I like that. Just kind of playing around, moving things around, um, creating sort of a sky and utilizing some of those underneath colors. You can make it go darker. Maybe you go too dark and you can wash things off a little bit. Introduce a little bit more blue, which I just did on top. A little more ultramarine blue. Still try to keep areas of light. Now, if you're using weak paper, you might have a hard time. You might start taking the surface off, so you want to not get too harsh with it. But this is Canson XL, 140 pound. Uh, it's 25% pulp paper, I believe. Um, it can take a certain amount of abuse. So you can see I've created some little clouds and some little shapes in the in the sky there and I'll show you as we go along if you're not you know super happy with what you have as long as it's wet and it stays open you can play around so this is my synthetic brush and sometimes I'll use this to kind of blend and smooth things out A clean synthetic brush that they're soft and you can kind of use it as a blending brush can also take and go in with your kitchen roll aka paper towel and you can dab in some sky effects just an, another one of the many things you can do now looking at this if I don't like it again it's still open and wet um, I take my blending brush and I can blend that around a little bit And I'll, I'll keep playing with it until I get something that I say, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I, I like that effect that's coming through. Now this is ultramarine blue and Payne's gray. Just working in some sky effects. Just see what I like, what I don't like. And also to just to show how flexible this medium is. 
the idea is here to have fun, stress relief, see what happens. Let the watercolor take you on this journey. That's what I've been doing for three years. People have been following me, and I greatly appreciate it. Watching me going from really... I've posted everything online almost that I've ever done from the beginning, so you can see how I've improved over time. And I'm not going to lie to you. you got to put a lot of hours into it to get it, really. I mean, some people might be a little more uh, prone to picking up things faster. Um, but, you know, I've probably got about 3,000 hours into this. Now, I'm showing you here, you can almost take, you can reverse paint out a mountain um, is what, what I had going on there. Um, and now I'm going to show you, you can almost start over again, really. Take the Payne's Gray, say, well, okay, I want a fresh slate again. Now, the only drawback when you do this, if you don't like this effect, is depending on the type of paper you're using, it may create a grainy effect. But I, I rather like that effect. I think sometimes you purposely might want to achieve a grainy effect, sort of a grainy film effect. But from a distance, you may not notice that granular effect. It really just depends on what you like. Now, see, there's a nice, you have some glow from the right there. Um, and I'm just contrasting it. I'm seeing how it looks if I drop a little bit of a mountain down the side here. Again, this is not going to take because I'm going to change this up as I go. Again, I'm just playing. I'm just putting in the shapes. I've said this before, but in trying to correct paintings, taking old paintings, washing them down, seeing what your limits are is a great learning tool to see what you can do in this medium. When I first painted, I thought my painting, after I was done painting it, or as I went along, that's it. I can't change it anymore. But you really can. It's much more flexible than it appears when you first start out. So now I've painted a little bit of a mountain in here, and I've got some mountains to the side. Again, we're going to use white to define some areas, so we're really going for the shapes here. Um, I'm going to use a card to kind of create some of that snow effect, but ultimately because you can see areas I've scraped and stuff before, a little harsh on the paper, we're going to use the opaque of the white to uh, hide some of that, I guess, would be the way to, to describe that. As you can see, we have that sky going, and it's kind of a wistful sort of a sky. I'm just clearing a little bit of that off with my clean brush. I have a towel hanging on the side. You can't really see it. And I'll reach over and I'll dry off my and wipe off what's on my brush. And then I take the synthetic brush, as you see, and I'm kind of blending it a little bit. It creates a streakiness sometimes if it's starting to dry, but that I can contend with shortly. We'll take a paper towel and redefine our little cloud areas. As long as it stays wet. So now I'm just dropping in some shadows for the mountain. You could leave it like this and not use any any white for the snow at all. I'm using titanium white gouache from M. Graham. It's a thinner, more liquidy paint. I'm just stretching the paper out a little bit here. And I just did some broad strokes on the bottom just to start kind of laying in some darker tones um, where the 
contrast of the water is going to be. But again, as I go along, this is just sort of my process. A lot of this may not even matter at this point. Now you could stop here and go, that's good enough for me. This is just some cerulean blue or some cobalt blue, one of the two. You can see some of the dripping of the paint there. Sometimes it's hard to go over that paint dripping when it goes down. I'm just going to put in some foliage here. Cadmium yellow hue, Cotman color with some ultramarine blue and a little bit of Payne's gray maybe. Sometimes I'll do a stroke of that into the bottle, like a little bit of green as if maybe it, there's a little reflection there or something. If I don't like it, I'll come back with something else. It's a fine line here because you could come up with a muddy mess of a painting. But have fun. You're having fun. You're focusing on this. At the end, it's just your next stepping stone to your next painting. This painting is all what's happening right now. This is the stepping stone to the next painting. What is your next what is your best painting you ever painted? Your next painting. So I've taken the little paper towel and I've kind of uh, dabbed in a little bit on this cloud there. Now I'm just taking a little toothbrush and sort of flicking some water in, dabbing out a little bit, seeing what I like. I think I'm sculpting. I'm sculpting in watercolor. Putting in a little red, seeing if I like that. I mean, you could you could try these things, you know. And it's good to do this too because you see what color schemes work on the paper. Like, okay, that's gaudy. That doesn't play with that. And I found in paintings, it it, it helps to stay within a range. If you put like all kinds of colors and you go from high green light all the way down to like black and everything in between there isn't like a theme to the color scheme of the painting if you're going to make something that's more blue in tone everything should have blues in it if something is green in tone there should be a yellow mixed in there should be a central color that's what i found it could be all wrong so I'm putting a little white on my board while that other stuff is drying. I don't put it on my palette um, because it mixes in. It creates a mess on your palette. It makes everything look kind of opaque gray. Now I've started off with the hake, but truth be told, I don't like using the white with the hake. I'd much rather use a flat brush. A flat brush really just kind of like you can um, you can dry brush it on better now here see I've overdone I've 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 knocked out that little shadow that was going on and it's just too much it's too much I'm gonna go in too far with that but that's okay we can come back in with shadowing we can blend it but the problem is when you have white, it's not really a problem, but the issue that you're going to run into when you have white that's wet on your painting is it's going to start blending in and it affects and sort of contaminates everything around it. So you might find yourself wanting to dry that solidly, but even when you apply fresh paint, it actually opens up that white again. That white opens very, very easily. So I'll come up with a little more of a defined edge, as you can see, and we'll have the tone to the left that's our shadow of the mountain.
it's fun. It's fun to blend the colors that way, and I'm really enjoying the use of white. For a long time, I didn't use white because, you know, they said, well, I'll use the white of the paper, white and watercolor. The moment I stopped with that mindset and I decided to try those different things, it was like opening new doors. Everything else I've ever done or tried or painted, from figurines to acrylic painting to pastel painting, I've used white. It's just the weirdest thing to say, well, you can't use white. And it's funny because every time you buy a palette that has colors already in it, there's white in there. Who's using this? Who is using this white and breaking these rules? But there are some drawbacks and there are some little things to it. The one thing about white is it really sticks out. So if you're using a lot of white in your painting, it should really probably be a snow scene or used on water or something in the way that because it's it's so bright that it's just going to make your other colors look it, it doesn't in some ways it won't look right so if you use it as snow and you use it as water um it plays better that way now if you mix very very tiny amounts into different colors you can make that work too the only thing is they start to lean toward almost like a pastel uh side now I've washed some of that paint from the middle. I think we're going to go with some water or some ice in the middle. I've done a little spray bottling. and There's some unique little things happening texture-wise in the, in, the, uh, in the water area below. All right, I'm just doing a little more detail with the, with the snow on the mountain there. Needs a little bit more variety in there. So I'm mixing a little blue, a little Payne's gray, and sort of blending that in with the white. You see how it's turning gray on the board when you add other things to it. I'm just very quickly painting in sort of a slope there. And now is really, I want to dry this because I think the time for really blending so much is, is past. So we'll give it a good, good, strong dry. Sometimes as I'm going and I'm drying and I see it to start to dry, I'll come back in with my brush and... I'll continue to blend things. After a while, it starts to take on almost like a oil or past or uh, acrylic type look to it, to the point where you say, maybe I should just try acrylics. <laughs> but I like the effect of watercolor, and I like the ease of the cleanup, and there are some neat effects that come about, even if you're painting in a heavy-handed manner like this. As the white dries, it dries a little duller, and if you put uh, multiple coats over it, it'll get brighter and brighter. Just blending a little with my finger. I enjoy this process a lot. I enjoy the blending and the paint. There's something to be said for some painting that takes you 15, 20 minutes, but sometimes you take a painting like this and it takes you 45 minutes to an hour, and you're having just a fun the whole time. You got your headphones in. Um, it's fun. I mean, it's uh, the whole time you're just blending and you're creating and it's taking your mind off of other things. Trying to appear like there's some treetops um, by using the hake brush and a darker color. And now I'm just going crazy and putting in maybe like a pine tree. 
And I will put white on this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be the shape. Now you can see the little problem I'm running into now. Notice there's a little white mixed in on there. And there's an opaque look on that tree at the bottom. So we're going to have to dry that. We have to dry that really well so we can put another coat on top and make it look like the same shade as the tree. And you have white on there, that's the problem, is it gets it gets into everything. It can work for you and it can work against you. So we'll dry it really good here. This is probably one of my more complicated videos. Don't take it as a whole, but take it as in parts where if you're utilizing something in a, in a painting you're doing, um, it helps. It's not really a good follow-along type painting. But if you can take one of your old paintings that just didn't work, you can't stand it, you want to use the paper, you go over the top of it and use, maybe the composition is fine, then you can do that. Taking a little yellow. While it's wet, I like to dab in a little cad yellow hue. And as you see, you add a little with the, I'm using a fan brush. It's actually a uh, oil painting fan brush, but I like it because I'm not really using water. It doesn't really hold hardly any water. Now these early dabs here of white are just to sort of lay the foundation and of snow collecting on the tree, but this is going to dry back. And I squeeze out a little bit out of the tube. You know, it's it's eight bucks, I think, for a tube of uh, wash. So, you know, you're using a lot of it. So now I've gone over the top with another layer. And look at it. It looks a nice bright snow on top of those branches. And there's just enough coming out underneath that you look at it and you say, that's a pine tree. Thing of it is, you start using too much white in the foreground and the bot. Before you know it, you're it's a, it's a white out. <laughs> now I'm trying to come up with a shoreline here, um, and this color is really not going to work. I thought something a little warmer, um, but not really. I mean, when you look at a snow scene and you look at a banks, they're dark. You know, there's not a lot of color there. Obviously, exaggerating can really help. Um, you know, if you have a scene that's just drab, you're going to have to bring out those colors because otherwise, you know, you could just take a picture of a snow scene and it's really, the whole thing is gray. Now, as you can see, I'm taking some of that white that's still on my brush and I'm just kind of swiping it across, looking for some effects there that ultimately will make their way into the painting. A few little scrapes with a fingernail. It's funny watching your own uh, painting back and you start thinking, hmm, maybe I should have did this here, or maybe I should have did that there. I can't imagine it's that far from somebody else watching your painting and saying, oh, oh I liked it that way. Oh, oh, why did he do that? Or, you're going to mess up the painting. <laughs> Anything that dries a little bit, as long as it's still a little wet, you can give it a little spray with the spray bottle. So 
So a little drying and a little bit of blending, drying with the hair dryer. Really want to get it good and dry this time around. Yeah, this uh, this time here we're, we're getting real dry so that if we dry brush or put any other colors on like this, we can start really blending them in. If you want to get a little more blue in your water, um, you know, little cooler colors that will ultimately show through when you start adding the, the snow um, and blending them. This is... A good time to do that and to make sure it's dry underneath so it doesn't disturb too much of that. This is where when you're playing it's almost like blending oil colors. But they dry way faster. White dries slower though I will say. And see as you go over the top and you take brighter and brighter it will look brighter over the top, but as it disturbs any colors underneath, you'll see it, it starts to go gray. Again, it's experimentation, too, as you go along. Who knows, maybe in another year I'll have a completely different approach to this, but this is where this is right now. It's funny how you evolve over time. And all of your paintings, you know, I, I tell everybody, get on, like, Instagram or wherever, your Facebook Post your paintings as you do them, and you can have a record of your progress. That's what I've been doing, and that's what people have been following and seeing what I'm doing. Um, and you can go back and you can look at paintings I did from two or three years ago, and you can see, hopefully, um, either improvement or coming along in technique of some sort and an evolution of the, of the progress. So I've added a little cat yellow hue just to get a little more bright colors in there. Again, when you're working with watercolor, they dry back. They lose their luminosity, their intensity. They're not as bright as when you do like an oil painting. They stay and hold their brightness and they dry and they're very bright looking. Um, watercolor isn't that way. They tend to dry more flat. As you see with the flat brush, as I stroke it on the uh, paper there quickly, dry brush strokes, you can see how it, it leaves a texture look. And if you take and you make like a darker area, like I'm doing now, you can use that to put white over the top and create a snow, a bush with like snow on it. We got early snow here where I'm at and the leaves haven't even finished falling off the trees and there's snow on them. It's a weird effect. I've never seen anything really like it before where you still have the change of fall colors and there's snow all over. Um, but it's melted now, but uh, you know, just driving around and like looking at that and. I thought about doing a painting called October Snow. I still might do it. Um, it's an interesting look. Usually you have bare trees by the time snow falls. So now you see if, like, say you do a bush and then you start to do the white over the top and it's not dry, 
it immediately blends and starts to go gray. So we'll come back to that. Now if you start blending in some colors into the snow here, like I'm doing now, um, it will lean a little more to the grayer, but if you can blend it, um, you'll still get some of that color. Since this is sort of a frozen looking lake, we don't need exact reflections. This is one of those things where I'll play with it until I get it. I'm, ha I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just coming in with some darker, the shadow colors, your darkest darks toward the end. It's funny, as you do a little bit, it looks good. You do a little more, and it's like, eh, too much. <laughs> too much of a good thing. So we come back in with the fan brush, and we put a little snow on top. A little snowy grass. And of course, as soon as you do that, and you look at it, you go, eh, maybe that was too much. <laughs> this is this balancing act that you do. And just to keep it open, I've given it a little spray with the spray bottle. Take my blending brush just very, very lightly. Just to, just to get it all to blend together. And it, it is coming together, I think you can see. I'm using my synthetic brush here with a little bit on here to kind of blend in just a little more white on the sides. And a little bit more blue. Really want to maintain some color down there. I don't want it to be too monochrome looking. Adding a little bit of yellow with some white mixed into it. Hopefully, it looks a little like the sky, maybe, is playing off of that. And now probably would be a good time to do a quick dry. Put out a little bit more white on my board. And we're going back to the medium hake. And just getting some more white on. These uh, foreground areas. We need something in the foreground here to kind of push back. Everything else. If you dry, if your, if your hake is rather dry and you're bristles are spread apart you can create sort of some grassy foliage effects even with white as you see here I just tapped a little bit on there if your hake is mostly dry the problem is as you can see when you go across with the hake and white on it because the bristles are not all the exact same length 
you see how it makes sort of lines. So you almost need a flat brush to make more even coats. If that makes sense. You'll see here. I'll come in with the. Uh, now let's let's do a little more uh, highlighting of the uh, foreground here before I do that. I'll go all the way around, all, all the way down the bottom. I'm kind of drying and I'm multitasking here just for the sake of the uh, length of this video. It's kind of a long one. All right, so here we come in with the flat brush again. This is like a half inch flat. Barely any water on this brush, just enough to go across. And I want it to either look like maybe there's either snow on there or you look maybe you, you see in a little brightness from the mountain sort of reflecting on it. I don't really care so much what you see as long as it looks acceptable, if that makes sense. And that white plays off. So you have the white, you have the foliage below it, and then the white again on the bottom. So there's little dazzling things there for the eye. Again, I'm drying this as I go, just to expedite things a little bit. It's hard to get when the paint's not totally dry to get that white to have that bright look. As I said before, it kind of goes grayish. One day I'm going to try, even though it'll put me into mixed media, is maybe some acrylic white over the top for snow just to see what it would do combination wise. Because acrylic paint is so much cheaper I'm just while I'm letting everything dry I'm just popping in a few little birds you see how that sky has has dried and it's got sort of a yellowing look to it from what was underneath what was there before we've still got essentially the same composition that was underneath but I think you'd agree it's quite a different painting now than when I started with Um, this is a little Payne's Gray I've put on my board. I want to get some darker, deeper shadows underneath. It might be a little too much. So I'm standing back and I looked at it from the back of the room and I'm gonna I'm taking a little darker colors here and just bumping up this shoreline a little bit. Sort of blending those colors into the bottom. And this could be an icy pond, it could be a field. And I come in with a color like this and I, well, it doesn't really work. I give it a little spray. I might uh, wash it off. I might uh, 
dab it like this and blend it in a little more to tone it down. It would be better to have the colors from the foliage by the mountain on the bottom. That would tie it together better. So we'll add a little of that yellow and ultramarine. Now, instead of drying it, if you're the person that likes to take their time, you can let it fully dry. Don't, you don't have to use the hair dryer and come back later fresh. Do this over the course of a couple days. I know I show the fast and loose method, but that's, that's for the fun of it. I mean, if you're the type of person that wants to take their time, when you before you go to the hair dryer, you know you want to dry it, then just let it sit and go do whatever else you want to do and come back later. I've done that before too. You're still painting in a spontaneous free mode. You're just taking breaks in between and there's nothing wrong with that. I know people that'll lay the, the, the first layer and get their washes in and then they'll leave their painting and then come back the next day and then they'll finish. So you don't have to feel pressured. To, oh, I got to do this in one sitting. It's what I like to do. Um, it's fun and it shows people you don't have to put a lot of time into your painting for those of us with busy lives. Um, but it certainly doesn't have to be done that way. It does, doesn't have to be done that way at all. You can, you can take your time if you like. Take a week on a painting, you know. As long as you see what I do here and it looks approachable to you, you know. I definitely want to be an advocate for the medium in a way that it looks fun and it's something you'll try and it gives you some stress relief. So I'm going to see how this looks with a, uh, with a mount just to kind of see where I'm at. I'm not finished, but here's with a mount on. Um, it's a good idea to do this and then kind of get an idea where... Um, where you feel you stand with it. Okay, so I've taken the mount off and I think the bottom area needs a little bit more TLC. Put out a little bit more white. Put a little bit more white to define sort of the bottom of that tree. That was kind of bothering me. And now I'm tapping on some more white. And you can see it's brighter and it's less contaminated to create some snowy grass. Dry hake again. It's not 100% dry, but it's dry enough. There's, there's not like a bunch of moisture on there. Use a towel, go back and forth with it and get the moisture off is what I do. Still having some of that green show through underneath. Coming back with some darker darks to define this uh, shoreline. And there's a little lighter areas. I took my card a little bit and um, it looks like there's maybe some little rocks sitting there. <clears throat> We got to be careful here because we're getting dangerously close to being mud makers. And that's all you'll have left is mud. Now well, we're going to come in with our rigger brush and sort of set up a little snow on the shoreline here. Maybe a little water line. Maybe it's a little melted. 
whatever you see, just sort of define that line there. Just banging it in there. I eh, should dab a few little dots here and there. Just who knows what it is. Bottom looks a little dry, so we can try to create some sticks. Making some little vertical sticks always seems to kind of sell, sell it to the eye. Well, we are nearing the end, believe it or not. I know this was a long one. I thank you for watching and uh, subscribing and commenting. I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed painting this one. I had, a, I had a good time. And I hope you're having a good time with your paintings. You can always ask me questions. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can join our Ron Ranson group, um, who is the sort of father of the hake brush and bringing this fast and loose format to, uh, to us. Uh, great person to learn from. Sadly, he's passed away about three, four years ago, but uh, he's still with us in spirit and books and DVDs, and it's a great, great person to learn from. And of course, all the great people that are on YouTube right now, Stephen Cronin, Dave Usher, so many good people to learn from. A little blending with my finger. I did a little sort of with the uh, rigor brush and let's zoom in and uh, here is the finished painting let's get real close you can see how that light is coming through and how we have the shoreline and just so many little details and just bursting with with energy there and the bottom is all blended in and I think we did pretty well there in covering up the old and bringing in the new. Well, once again, I thank everybody for watching. I hope you uh, subscribe. And uh, you can also check out my eBay shop. If you want to buy any of my paintings, I use uh, the funds to buy more supplies, to do more paintings and more videos. So make yourselves a great day, everyone.